So we've started organizing our strategies generally like this, and this is still in flux. But they're around broad-based community engagement, grants and incentives, uh, partnerships and programs, formal education, so working with the um, K-12 sector in particular, research and monitoring, and then regu what regular regulatory tools can we use. And within that, we've got some actions that are starting to emerge, and um, I'll talk about a couple of those, and then I wanted to ask you for your, for your ideas for other strategies and, and actions that we might want to think about. And we've really been working, we've got a really great external advisory committee on this, and they're really struggling too. It's hard to figure out what you can actually do about this um, in 10 years to achieve a One Planet footprint. So here's some of the things that we're talking about. Uh, Broad-based communication and marketing campaign, either around one planet footprint or around the greenest city that unites all of the work of the other working groups around water, more water efficient behavior and more water efficient choices that people can be making um, through to all of the other working groups. So something that unites all of that in a way that makes sense to the people that live here and, and um, is easy to navigate and is easy to, easy to wade through what the, the really um, successful things and, and, and uh, things that will have the greatest influence on footprint reduction and on achieving Greenest City because there's a lot of noise out there in the, um, around these things. Doing a local footprint calculator using local data um, and that will have the benefit of educating people about it, giving them the tool that they can play with and, and, and track over time. But we can also track um, individual performance or individual reductions in that way citywide if we do something like that. A directory of sustainable choices, so the, the local food group is thinking about doing a local food directory, um, others are talking about um, other service providers and good providers within the city um, that might help people navigate, making help, help, it make, help make it easier for people to make the right kinds of choices and develop supports and tools for local businesses as well. So we want different entry points for people who are coming from different places if they're looking to reduce the footprint of their business or their school or of their or of their um, individual habits or of their household, try and find different points of entry for different, different people in different communities. Um, yeah, so I'm, I don't think I'll, I think I'll skip that one. And is anybody, we're open to hearing strategies, actions, and um, any other comments that you have? Hmm. So, um, the slide that you showed at the beginning, or maybe it was Peter that showed it, where it was, you know, number two was vegan options for all. Mm -hmm. And you suggested that the city doesn't typically have an influence over people's diet choices and that sort of thing. But how has the group thought about um, harnessing the energy of, obviously, with 700 votes or whatever there's an active vegan community out there is has the group strategized around harnessing the existing community energy as a facilitator i guess yeah um yes and no i guess that's a such a sensitive one for people to think about and um to deal with here at the city because people's food to like your you try and talk to people about their food choices and it's it's a hard one you know it's a really personal thing so uh, we're trying to think about some things that we could actually do around that and maybe one of them is to promote or uh, to promote a big part of the one of the campaigns that the vegan movements run is meatless Mondays so we could we could try and do a meatless Monday in city facilities in in parks board in school board and in city facilities and, and do something like that if there's an appetite to do that and then it's leading by example rather than telling other people that they they should make a different choice but I'd love to hear ideas on that because it's a really it's a really sensitive one for people and it's there's so much dogma attached to diet choices that you just get immediate this sort of immediate reaction to talking about that I totally appreciate that and I'm not suggesting that that be the place to start but just the idea of that there is this existing energy and veganism is the truth the example I chose but you know maybe it's pedal power or whatever right mm -hmm. like there's a lot of existing and I wonder if the city is looking at how we can harness that energy yeah and support those groups because they're already doing it but yeah. maybe it's just a question of connecting groups with uh, administrators and other people who are trying to put this stuff on the ground 
Yeah, one one thing I've been sitting in on a lot of working group and external advisory group, group meetings over the last little while, and one of the things I'm really noticing in the external advisory committee meetings is that um, the people there want to see their place in the plan. They they want to see. So I was in one um, one meeting where an organization that runs. Um, energy efficiency programming for small businesses. They're like, okay, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at what we do and I'm trying to see what percentage our work can, can contribute to the city's reduction goals. And so people are really, uh, people are trying to find their place there. Organizations are trying to find their place there. And so I'm trying to encourage everybody to, to, to think about this isn't a city of Vancouver plan, but it's a city plan. And there's going to be space for others to take in running with some of these ideas and um, we need to encourage that because there's no way we can achieve these goals without that happening and these targets without that happening is my impression. Yeah. Just a couple of comments, not actually a question, but one is um, you know, when you talk about the, all the external factors and I think the greenhouse gas reduction program is a lot like that too, you know, where we've made a community plan. I mean, it's very, very dependent on the community more than, even though it's within the city's geographical boundaries, it's still a lot about personal choices, corporate choices, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's got to be some learnings there, I think, that we could start to apply to this. Mm -hmm. um, on the food, just as a comment, but on the food side, um, something that I think seems to be uh, striking a chord with a broader group than necessarily the vegan one is the 100-mile diet concept, which may not be as effective, uh, you know, sort of numerically um, as um, just stopping the consumption of meat, but it's it's less selective in terms of um, you know your dietary limitations, and it's something mm -hmm. that has other benefits in terms of local economy and so on. Um, that that maybe could be another sort of piece of the promotion. Yeah. And I also wonder too about you know so much of this is about, as you said it's about. Um, uh, raising the consciousness of people, you know, through information. Like the, the seafood industry is trying to sort out its place and how they have, you know, the sustainable choice labeling. Mm -hmm. and of course, it's a huge debate about whether it's valid or not and so on. But, mm -hmm. you know, this that, that kind of idea could be extended much further through the food industry. Um, yeah. And at least start it as a bit of a premium product, maybe, but that's as... You know, it's like organic food. It has such broader penetration now than when it first started. There might be some ways to kind of start chipping at it yeah. with those kind of programs. Have, has yeah. that been discussed at all? That one, um, we've talked about it a little bit, and the food group has talked about it a little bit. It, that That's the kind of thing I think is another organization would really need to rise to that one. But there are, there are possi possibilities for people to do that if we find ways that we can incent that or encourage that. But I think that's a good idea. And the, the food group is all over the local food. Um, th their target is around promotion of local food resources and neighborhood scale food resources. So that's a big part of their work. But uh, yeah, our t and it has a ton of co-benefits around jobs and greenhouse gas emission reductions. Unfortunately, it doesn't help with the footprint all that much, which is really interesting because the food miles, the transportation of food isn't a big piece of that ha half of the pie. It's about production. Um, and the land required. That's why why beef and dairy and dairy products are so high is because there's so many inputs that go into producing that particular type of food. It's high on the food chain. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting. Really interesting.